Um, but we are now to my favorite part of the day, which is our student panel. Um, like Kylie mentioned earlier in the welcome, our AT members have been preparing for a long time to be here with you and your students today. These five have been preparing for a little bit longer and going to some extra training so they could do this panel for you today. Um, so I'm excited for you to hear from them and get to ask your questions. But with that, I'm gonna pass it off to Hannah right here and she's gonna give you a little bit more of an introduction. Hi all, we're excited to be here today um, and to answer your questions. Um, the five of us come from different places and backgrounds and between the five of us, we've had an insane amount of roommates and professors and just experience here at Utah State. So you can ask us questions about anything about Utah State, but if you want to like kind of keep it to kind of experience based and any questions about student life, that would also be amazing. And we're going to go around and just kind of say a little bit about ourselves before we start. And so if we want to start with Ashley, I mean... I'm so sorry. This is Michaela. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Ashley's usually here and we both have brown curly hair, so it's fine. Um, but like she said, I am Michaela. I am about to be a junior here at Utah State. Um, oh, I forgot to say I'm from Alpine, Utah. And I'm a double major here in music therapy and marketing. And I'm also a transfer student from BYU Provo. So hopefully that wins me a lot of points here. My name is Mason Ralphs. I'm from Pocatello, Idaho, and I am going to be a junior here at Utah State this coming fall. Um, I'm studying tech systems, product development, and unmanned aerial systems. My name is Hannah. I'm from Dallas, Texas. Um, my major is communication disorders and deaf education. I recently gained residency, so if you have any questions about that, I'm your girl. My name is Jarrett Perry. I'm from a little town called Morgan, Utah. I'm majoring in electrical engineering. I'm doing a minor in mathematics. And my name is Maya Slee Stokes. I'm majoring in mechanical engineering. I'm from Mesquite, Nevada, and I'm also involved on in USU Student Association, and I'm in a sorority on campus, Alpha Chi Omega Beta Z chapter. Um, and you got the floor is now yours to ask us some questions. So I would suggest following USU sororities on Instagram. They post all of our recruitment information because there is a little sign up fee to sign up for recruitment. We will also have a booth at the info fair with the fraternity and sorority life and our director will be there and you can ask him some more questions, ask some other of like my sisters their questions. And it's just like a couple day process. And if she has any questions about what recruitment week looks like, I'd love to answer and help ease any concerns. So the question was about residency. Um, and so I gained residency for tuition purposes so that I could like have like 22,000 down to like 4,000, 4, right? Um, and it was a pretty simple process. I started it in April. I know a lot of people start it earlier, um, but by May 1st, I needed to get a driver's license and my voter registration. And then, well, I guess I started early because my parents also like claimed me as independent on their taxes. And then I just had to show proof that I was here for 12 months, which they were pretty flexible about. Like I got it before because like I moved here in August and I haven't been here since this August. Right. But I showed them my rental contracts that I was like signed for the entire school year and for the entire summer. And I think that was it. And they allowed me to get residency. So it's pretty nice. Do you have any other questions? So there is a lot <laughs> that can be done. Um, it says that you can't leave for more than 30 days, but I don't know how they track that. And like, I don't know, I don't want to tell you any wrong information. All I can tell you is that I was not in Utah. I was not in Utah for more than 30 days and it was fine. But I, if you have more specific questions about that, I can also help you afterwards. Good question. Um, the reason that I chose to transfer, well, the main reason was they don't have my program down at BYU. Utah State is the only school in Utah with a music therapy program. 
And so that was originally why I came. But part of why I've stayed here at Utah State is because of the culture up here. There's a big emphasis on inclusion and activities. And I am an extroverted person, in case you couldn't tell. And so for me, it's just been a really good um, place where I can make a lot of friends and meet a lot of people and have that small town feel in a big place. And I also grew up in Alpine, Utah. So I felt like I was kind of in a fishbowl down in Provo where no matter where I went, everybody knew me or knew my grandpa or knew my parents. And so it was nice just to get away from that. But I mean, BYU itself is a wonderful school, just like Utah State, I think academically, both have been very wonderful for me. That's a great question. Uh, the question was, what did our parents do to help us during our first year of college? Um, so I'll start off. I feel like one thing my mom did that that I loved, she asked me to let her know when I had like tests or exams coming up. And then my mom would like keep track of that. And she would always reach out to me afterward and just say like, how did it go? And that just, I loved that. Um, I just loved knowing that my mom was thinking about me and was supporting me, whether the test went good or bad my mom was thinking about me and my mom was on my side and that really like helped me out especially if the test didn't go well i can go um me and my mom are pretty close in general um i also left my mom an empty nester which was really rough and so it was scary for both of us to leave her there with the dog and my dad so we had to like set some boundaries both ways so <laughs> i would call her pretty much every day definitely every day like two to five times but one thing that I did is every time I was like walking to the bus or walking home I would call my mom just because I'm being productive at the same time I'm not necessarily like sitting down having an hour conversation which sometimes it would lead into that but um it helped but she always complains because I'm breathing heavy on the phone but that's a different story um another thing that my mom does is at first so I live about a seven hour drive away and so going home wasn't something that we thought I would be able to do very often. And so sometimes I would be like, oh, I'm going to go on this trip or I have like all this weekend, nothing to do. I got super caught up on my homework. And sometimes I would feel a little bit guilt tripped into coming home. And I didn't really like that feeling. And so I kind of talked to her about it. I was like, mom, I will come home when I come, want to. I promise I still like you guys. I will come home, but maybe not this weekend. So definitely like figuring out what's best for both you because you're also important and your student it's it's a good balance um something that my mom did is she kind of let me like take the reins on our relationship a little bit like um she definitely like let me like go and like do my thing in college and like like um be on my own and like she wasn't like texting me 24 7 which I appreciated but then like when I did reach out to her and when I did like kind of like have that like um okay mom like I really miss you like, like can I what can I call you like she made sure to like reach out back to me and um that was really nice um my siblings however were a little bit like the worst for a bit they like FaceTime every single day and it's really cute but like they would get like mad at me whenever I wasn't doing that with them and I was like I'm kind of like busy and like why are you guys not busy and um it was kind of a little bit of a learning curve of like um, then when I did join the calls, like not getting like, oh, Hannah's finally here. Or like, oh, Hannah's here. We're excited to see you. You know, like that, like different change in tone. But um, living family can be something definitely hard to navigate. But um, just like also something that my mom did was like, I'm the fourth out of six kids. So like this is not the first time that we've done it. But she also understood that it, it was still unique. It was still like something different for me. And just like taking each kid for like what? Um, like who like your student is, is going to be helpful. So for me, um, I have a really interesting family situation. I mean, my family don't really get along. Um, so for me, the most helpful thing that my parents did was just kind of let me be. And I know that's really hard, um, especially for the parents that like going into this, you know, that your student might do some things that you aren't really wanting them to do. And I'm a good person. Don't get me wrong. Um, <laughs> It's not like I'm committing like crimes. Okay. Like I'm a good person. 
Um, I'm not trying to be a bad person. However, my path and the path that my family thought I would take are very different now. Um, and so for them, that's been hard. Um, and for me, it's also just been hard um, just because it's one thing that's important is just show support for your students, um, regardless of their decisions, support them because they're your student and, and they're yours and, and you hopefully love them <laughs> despite what they do um, for who they are. But for me, like they, my parents just kind of let me be. I mean, yes, they were encouraging me and do different things. I didn't really appreciate that as much. Um, but the one thing that I was grateful for is they just kind of hands off and, and let me do my thing because your student's going to learn and they're going to go through life and they're probably going to realize down the road that they were wrong. Um, and you want it to be a good environment for them to be able to come back and say, you know what, you were right. Um, or whatever their response is. And so for me, I just I kind of let your student experience college, let them make decisions um, and be welcoming for them when they, when they, whatever they decide and just always, always be supportive. I'll echo what everyone said, especially about boundaries. I think it's really hard to navigate and figure out and it takes a big learning curve, especially based off of your student's schedule and what they have going on, how often they'll be calling and how often they'll be communicating. And so for me, um, my mom did a really good job of, especially after I had a really stressful semester, she just recognized like if I could talk, I would call her. And if I needed to talk, I would call her. And during that time, she would kind of gauge where I was at emotionally on how much she told me about what was going on at home. Just And if there were things that I didn't feel like I was in a place to handle, I would just tell her. So keeping those lines of communication open were really, really good. Another thing that my mom did and that I will never, ever tell a parent not to do is she would give me lots of free groceries. Like whether that was I went home and it was like, oh, I'm going home this weekend. Like she would have me text her grocery lists, which I loved. Or like there were times where I had a really hard week. And when I get stressed out, I don't eat. And my mom knows that about me. So she like I would get a knock at my door and it was like an ice cream or something like that, which was really helpful because it was just little things where like all that she knew was that I was stressed about a text or test. She didn't know that like I wasn't eating because I was stressed out, but she, I mean, she had intuition and we have open communication. So she would do little things like that or order groceries to my, um, to my apartment, which again, I will never, ever complain about because in my brain it's free food. So that was something really helpful where it's just those little tiny details, but they make a huge difference in especially a college student and a college student trying to adjust. It makes a big difference in their life. Um, one of the things that I really enjoyed was a laundry bag backpack. I know I got mine at Costco and I was lucky that I lived on the first floor. Like I lived literally like 10 steps away from my laundry room, which was nice. But a lot of students that lived on like the fourth floor, or like the sixth floor, they just like put it on their backs, make their way down. And it was a lot easier than like kind of a plastic one that you have to like, you know, like arch around. So that's something that was really helpful for us and definitely communicating with your roommates and making sure you're not bringing multiple of stuff. Also making sure that you have good winter clothes that you can layer because especially for students that don't live close, like I do have a luxury where my house is only two hours away. So I can kind of swap out my winter and my summer clothes, but it's really, really helpful if you have layering pieces, especially if your student gets cold easily, like I get cold super easily. So a lot of times I'll have like a t-shirt and then a light sweatshirt and then a heavy sweatshirt and then my um, jacket and then my coat during the winter because I get cold super, super easily. And that way I can just take layers off if it's too hot in the classrooms and also good pair of shoes and socks. Cause, um, you don't like the worst thing in the world is walking around with soggy socks. I hate that. And they do a really good job of keeping the sidewalks cleared, but you want to make sure that your student has good winter clothing that they can layer and kind of store easily in case they can't just swap out their clothes like what I can do. So that's a big one that I think is important. One thing that my roommate had that I coveted all year long was like, it was a hanging shelf, like for our closet, because student housing is small, whether you're on campus or off, it's compact. And there's not very many shelves and things like that. And so he had like a shelf that he could put like t-shirts and pants onto. And I am about to go out and buy one for myself. So I don't have to just look at his next year.
more? Yes, uh, USU sanction events. We have pretty much at least one event a week, especially the first week. There's at least one event a day, usually two. So it's super busy. We're always having something on campus. And another thing that I like to remind is also there are different levels. So like if your student's more extroverted, like the howl, if you don't know what the howl is, it's the biggest Halloween party in the state of Utah. We throw it here in this exact building. And so that's for more extroverted people, people that aren't scared of big crowds. And then we also have Pobev, which is poetry and a beverage, which is just students around campus can sign up and their bands play or like they'll read some poetry or sing or do stuff like that. And you can like come and we have a beverage for you and you can sit and just listen. It's definitely more chill. And we have like traditions at USU, like Mr. USU, Miss USU, homecoming week. We, there's always something to do on campus and even off campus, there are cool things throughout the community because we are a pretty big college town. So we have skaties as well, which is I think Tuesdays, yeah, this Tuesdays you can get into the fun center for half off and you can skate. It's about two dollars. You can listen to 80s music, skaties. People love it. Once they go, they never stop going. Also, country swing dancing is a really big thing here. Once they go, they never stop. So we've got a bunch to do up here. It's a really fun time. One thing I'll add to that is there's so many events going on on campus. I've at times like felt lost trying to keep track of what's going on. The things that I would recommend to like for your students to keep track of that is like Instagram. They can follow like our USU Student Association events page, which is really helpful. They post about what's going on. Also on the My USU portal, there's an events calendar. If they're not really a social media person, that can be a great way to keep track of what's going on because it's important to get out and go to events and things to get connected at campus. Um, but it can be hard to keep track of. So those are the two places I would send your student to know what's going on when they get up here. So I, I have a vehicle and I will say um, the caveat with this is it depends on where your student is working and what your student's life looks like. My first semester here, so I just work on campus. And so my first couple semesters up here, I really did not use my car at all. Um, it kind of just sat in the parking lot unless I was driving down to go visit home, which didn't happen very often. And so I, I, I would tell my dad every time I went home, I was like, hey, if you need my car for a few weeks, you can have it. This last year, I actually got knee surgery in December. And when I came up in January, my dad needed the car. And so I just left it down there until February when one weekend they came and picked me up because now I'm getting more into with my major, I have to do clinical hours. And so I'm having to go and do clinical hours and observations and things like that, which I do need a car more for. Whereas when I was just kind of doing generals and not in as many of my major classes, I didn't need a car to travel around. And since I was working on campus, I also didn't need a car because I could just use the Aggie shuttle bus or Aggie blue bikes or the Cache Valley um, transit bus system. And so it just, it depends on what your student's life looks like, because like this coming semester, I'm definitely going to need a car. Whereas my last two semesters, I didn't need a car. So it's, it's kind of based off of what your student has going on and where they're living and how much they'll use a car. They have the Salt Lake Express, which goes straight to the airport. Going from here to the airport is really easy. Um, for me, I used it to get all the way back to Mesquite. It did take me 10 hours instead of seven. So I would definitely plan for the extra hours of like waiting for kids to get off. But our first stop was the airport and getting from here to the airport was very reliable. And they just pick you up right outside this building. It's super nice. They'll give you like when you move in. I don't know if you move in or like there'll be a Salt Lake Express thing during day on the quad, which is during welcome week. And we have like all of our clubs and stuff on the quad on the second day of school clubs and businesses around campus. So definitely go, they give out a coupon for Salt Lake Express. So if you're traveling farther south, plan for extra time. I know for me, I've used the tracks, um, trains, and I know they start in Ogden, um, but 
it's pretty easy to find somebody who's willing to just head to Ogden and drop you off or somebody that's already heading that direction. Um, I have a couple of roommates that are like, oh yeah, dude, anytime you need a ride to Ogden, I'm happy to go. Cause it's only like 45 minute drive. It's not too bad from here. Um, so I've had roommates that have just taken me and dropped me off in Ogden and I'll ride the, the trains down to Salt Lake city and past. Um, so I know for me getting South, that's, that's what I've, I've done. And it's been pretty nice. I will also say with that, um, the more people you meet, the more connections you make, and especially social media is a really big way where a lot of people will like put on their Instagram story or their Snapchat story or something like that. Just saying like, Hey, is anyone headed down to Salt Lake or Ogden area? And then someone like me where I have a car and I do head that way fairly often for different work things. And, um, my family being down there, I'll message them and say, Hey, if you need a ride, I can give you one. And I've taken people down to Ogden. I've taken them down to Provo. Like there are the more people you meet, the more connections you make and the more opportunities, especially going South. A lot of people do that fairly often. And so it's not as hard as you think it is to get rides down to the airport or down to the tracks or different things like that. The question was, how was the adjustment from a high school level class to a college level class, like academically? Um, I will say I was not quite prepared for how hard college was, honestly. And I, I was somebody who took a fair amount of like AP classes while I was in high school. Uh, my, my first test I took in college, I got a 58% uh, because I wasn't ready for how hard college was. And I hadn't le yet learned how much studying they expected me to do on my own. Um, so in my experience, right, if I, if I had put in more effort, I could have been prepared for that test. If I had understood like the requirement for like individual study in college, which is just a lot more than it was in high school, I would have been prepared for that test. It wasn't that my teacher didn't teach me what I needed to know, but I didn't uh, put in the time on my own because in high school, I never had to. Um, and so I wish I would have been more prepared for how big the jump is coming into college. I will add a caveat with that. Um, it also depends. Uh, my man, Jared over here is taking some pretty difficult classes. He's going to engineering. I have not taken a single hard class in my career here. Um, by choice, by choice. I'm not saying the classes that I take, I'm just good at. I'm just saying I choose easy classes. Um, so it really, it really depends on what your student is going to be majoring in. And a lot of it is like, if they enjoy the class or not, because I know for me, some of the easiest classes I've taken are ones that I was just passionate about. I was like, oh man, I just love billiards. Um, that was, that was an easy A, um, <laughs> but like academic wise, there's been a few courses that have been a little bit more difficult for me. Um, and like similar, it was a lot because I just didn't enjoy the class. Part of it was because I didn't show up. That's a really important thing is to, to go to class. Um, but there are certain courses that you can take on campus that fulfill a lot of those breadth requirements that if you show up and you pay attention, you'll pass the class. Um, I think a lot of the general education classes and a lot of those professors recognize that the general education, a lot of those students aren't going to be in their majors. And so they make the classes pretty straightforward. Um, but once again, yeah, it really depends on the major. So for me, I know as, far, as I get farther in my program, I mean, I'm lucky. So a lot of my classes are just drawing pictures and flying drones. So it's not really that hard in the first place. Um, but like they will get progressively more difficult as, as you continue. For me, I did pretty well in high school. I graduated as a valedictorian. But with that being said, I am also from Nevada and we're number 49 in the education system. So it wasn't super difficult um, to because the schools, anyways, that's a different topic. Um, but when I came here, I thought I knew what I was doing and I didn't, but the hardest part for me was going to a tutoring center. Like definitely. So I struggled a lot and I called my mom just like sobbing. I was like, I don't know how to do calculus. And she's like, you should just go to the tutoring center. And she just kind of talked me through it. And once I was like, got off my high horse and went to the tutoring center. I was there probably four times a week just because I was comfortable there and I could do my homework there. And even if I didn't necessarily think I needed help, I could just be in there, do my homework. And I'd come across a question, put myself on the queue. Someone come around. It was awesome. So definitely supporting your student being like, it's okay. Maybe we have so many resources on campus, writing centers, math centers, science centers, physics centers, 
they there's something for them that they can find the help so being there being supportive when they call you crying because they don't know how to do something just being there for them another really great resource is the professors um in high school i i did fairly well and i was similar to Jarrett, where i took a lot of ap courses and high level courses and um I really like to be independent and so I don't like to ask for help and in high school I didn't ever ask for help because I could just do everything by myself and so coming to college and like I took an accounting class and I am terrible at accounting like it's like I get 75% of the problem and then the last 25% I just can't figure out and so I reached out to my professor and I was like I don't know what's not connecting but there's something that's not connecting and after every single test she would come and she would go through the test with me and she would meet with me and help me out and that was really really helpful and crucial for me in that class because if it weren't for her willingness to help me I think I probably just would have dropped the marketing major because I would have been like I can't do this it's too hard I'll just not do that anymore and so in high school, they make it sound like your college professors don't care about you and they're not going to help you. And I was kind of under the impression that like I'm in charge of myself. I set my own schedule. The teachers really don't care about me, but the professors are here to help the students succeed. And so they're going to direct you towards the resources like the tutor labs and different things like that while also being there to help the students. So I would also encourage your student to reach out to those professors because they're also a resource. Yeah, I'm involved in Institute. It's something that I really enjoy participating in. Um, so, right, like you said, we don't have a building right now. And so for the next couple of years, while it's being rebuilt, classes are being held in chapels around campus and also in some classrooms on campus. Um, there will be an Institute booth at the info fair at the end of the day, and they can help like get you connected to sign up for a class. Um, but even without a building, it still hasn't been hard for me to like get to a classroom. Um, like I'm an engineering student, so I spend a lot of time in the engineering building and it's actually been nice because I can just schedule a class over on that side of campus in one of the classrooms rather than go from the engineering, engineering building over here and then back. So for the last semester, while it was like, while it was being torn down, it wasn't hard for me to get into a class. And if you have more questions, I'll be happy to talk more later. Yeah, and for any students of, of other religions, denominations, or not religious at all, um, we also have a lot of awesome opportunities with there. Um, there's going to be the Newman Center that are going to be here today. Um, I've been to a couple of their masses. It's been awesome. Um, we also just have like the Service Center, uh, the Valor Christian Service Center for students that are just going to like kind of want to be a little bit more involved with the community. Um, there's just a lot of opportunities to get involved with things outside of school that are more like self-spiritual oriented. Um, if that makes sense, regardless of whether it's organized religion or not. Um, and if you guys have any questions about that, I'd also be happy to answer those. Yeah, so that's definitely based off of the instructor and based off of the class that you're taking. Every single course that I've had, um, I've had professors that work with me. Like this last year, um, I took a trip to Fiji and I was gone for two weeks. <laughs> and so I ended up missing almost two weeks of school, not fully. And I was able to reach out to my professors, the majority of them, if you're going to miss a test or something like that, if you give them enough advance notice, they'll work with you and allow you to take that test early. Or like one of my professors this last semester, he had organized the test in a way where your lowest test score was dropped at the end of the semester. So he just told me not even to take the test. And so it's just letting your professors know as soon as you possibly can because they want to help the students succeed and they want to help them um, be okay and be okay to take trips and things like that. They don't want to stop you from having your experiences. And if you have an instructor that you tell them at the very beginning of the year, hey, I have this trip planned and they're like, 
well, that doesn't work with this course. We can't do that. There is also the option to drop that class or switch and see if it's offered in an online version or um, if there's another professor that offers it in a different way. There are those different options. So the earlier that you can let those professors know, the better, because then you can see what their policy is on those problems or on those experiences leaving. And a lot of uh, professors on campus do record their lectures. So like on my birthday, I had something planned and I also was not wanting to go to class on my birthday because it was on Friday. So I talked to my professor about it and he was someone that gave pop quizzes. And he said, we'd have four pop quizzes and I won't tell you when they are. You just have to come to class. And so I talked to him the first week of school. I said, my birthday is this day. Is there going to be a pop quiz? And he said, I don't know. You just have to remind me when we get closer. So I just reminded him the week of, he let me know, no pop quiz, just watch the recorded lecture. And I was totally fine. So, but some professors don't record their lectures. So just talking and also class base and kind of being persistent with it and reminding them because they do have a lot of students. So just reminding them that I will be gone for this day. Yeah, so <clears throat> any NCAA sanctioned sport at Utah State is free. It's like paid for by student fees. So you just show your student ID, which your student can pick up at the end of the day today, and you can just get in. And I love, love, love going to football and basketball games up on campus. That's like my favorite thing to do. Um, so I would highly, highly recommend if your student has any interest at all, even if they don't, tell them to try it at least once. Um, because it's so much fun to just be there like with the rest of the students in the student section. Um, and so that is, you can get into the games for free. Um, our student section is called the herd and you can get involved with what's called herd premium. And that's an additional like $25 fee for the school year. And what that does is it'll let you get into the games earlier. So if your student is like, just loves cheering at the games, wants to get down like the front row, I would probably say you'll probably want to get the herd premium, get there early, get the good seats. Um, but you don't, you don't have to, you can still come when it opens and get a pretty good seat anyway. Um, but also getting involved with Herd Premium can help get them connected with other people who also love watching sports and they'll do different events like tailgates before football games and things like that, um, which can be is a pretty fun club to join if you're if your student is you know interested in athletics at all. Along with Herd Premium, it, as much as it is like 20, 25 bucks, it also like comes with like free like free swag. So it's, that's really fun. And then there's also like the herd committee that like plans all of that. And so I know a lot of people that are involved in that. And that's like really fun for like the people that that's like their thing is just cheering on their Aggies. And so there's lots of ways to get involved with the herd. I have a lot of friends on the herd. So I just made friends with the people on the herd and they saved me seats up front, which is a plus. But another, if you want to find out more about the herd and how you can get involved, they'll have a little booth later. And I don't know, I don't actually know, but their booth will be there and they're all really nice and where we do have one of the best student sections in the country. I'm pretty sure we're top 10. Don't quote me on that, but it gets wild. So the question was, what's the hardest thing about college? Um, I think the hardest thing for me this last school year, I mentioned earlier, like the academics were hard, but I feel like I was able to get up to speed qu pretty quickly. Um, one thing that I still struggle with a little bit is just managing like my time. One thing that I never would have expected to struggle with in college was just like finding time to like cook dinner. But college just gets busy because I'll go to class and then I'll go to work and then I'll go home and, you know, have like a like an intramural basketball game or something. Then I get home and it's like nine o'clock and I haven't eaten dinner and I still have homework to do. And life just gets so busy. And so I think for me, like I, I try really hard to organize my time. Well, I just use like a Google calendar on my phone to keep track of everything I need to do, but it's still like a work in progress for me, keeping on top of everything I need to do and trying to find time to do the things I want to do. And I've been able to do that. Like I didn't miss any basketball games last year because like I wanted to be at all of them, uh, but it's still hard sometimes to try to judge, you know, do I have time or do I have to do my homework right now? sleeping. <laughs> so I am a very, I, I like, I'm the queen of FOMO. I really don't like to miss out on anything. 
and I have a really hard time saying no to anyone about anything. And I also load my schedule fairly heavy. Um, like I haven't taken a, a, a semester that's under 18 credits. And so um, mixing the social life with taking care of yourself, with working and taking a heavy class load um, has probably been the hardest part in college just because creating those boundaries is something that's really hard for me. So to help with that is I kind of found, well, so each semester I've had a roommate, they've been randoms, but at the beginning of the semester, I'll kind of let them know, like, I like going out and I like doing things all the time. And most of my roommates will be like, yeah, sick, I'll come along, let's do it. I'm like, okay, but if it hits a point where you're like, let's leave. And I'm sitting there going, yeah, I want to leave too, but I don't want to miss this. Make me leave. And they all help keep me accountable so that I actually like get home and go to sleep and take care of myself in that way. Because it's really easy to, whether it be forgetting to make yourself meals or forgetting to sleep or things like that, it's easy to kind of let personal care slip through the cracks. So that's probably been the hardest part of college, but having someone to keep me accountable has been the most helpful part of college. I think for, for me personally, the hardest part has been learning how to take care of myself um, mentally. Um, always been a big proponent of physical health. That's something that's been always really important to me. Um, but learning how to take care of myself mentally and manage and to get that stuff taken care of. That's probably been the hardest part for me. Luckily, um, we have caps and they have just been a super great help for, for me just being able to meet short term with therapists. They have group therapy sessions. Um, it's never something that I ever thought that I would need when I first came to Utah state, I was like, Oh yeah, dude, this is a great time. I'm going to have a good time. Um, uh, but I just was expending so much of myself and not taking time to myself. Um, or taking too much time to myself, which is also not a good option, um, that I just kind of had a really rough time mentally for a while. And so just being able to use the resources that we had here helped a lot. Um, but like, I would say, just please make sure your student knows um, their boundaries, kind of like what Michaela talked about. But like, we'll take regular inventories, just have them take regular inventories, see where they're at, see how they're doing, and just take necessary steps. Um, because I waited probably way too long <laughs> before I went and talked to a therapist. Um, but I was really grateful when I did, and it's helped a lot. Another thing for me personally, I started out as an exploratory major. The idea of picking the job that I wanted when I was 45 was very terrifying for me. And it still is. I'm still trying to figure out what I kind of want to do. I enjoy my major. And then I also hate physics. So it just, they don't go hand in hand. So I've been really struggling with that is being secure in what I want my major is. And talking to my parents has definitely helped. But that's been the hardest thing. Also, winter. I'm from Vegas. Winter and I don't get along. That was the hardest thing. Make sure your student is prepared because the winter is, it's brutal. So. Um, for me, I, I just finished my freshman year and, and I came from, I came from far. I'm from Texas and it's far, right? Like I was like far away from everything I've ever known. Any of like, I had like one sister here for a semester and that was like all I knew on campus. Um, and it was like lonely. Like I was meeting all these people and it was so fun, but it was like, I haven't seen a familiar face in so long. And I was someone that always knew I wanted to go far and I knew I wanted to leave home and like go really far, but it was hard. Um, and it's been really amazing to see now that I do have a community behind me and that I do have my people and like like I do, like I'm on campus and I'm seeing hi and I'm saying hi to people and it's like fun. And like, it's, I do see familiar faces. It's been really amazing to see, but that first semester was hard and it was lonely um, until I like really found like I hit my stride and found my people. And then probably going into this next semester, like time management, like what Jared said is really difficult. And it kind of just feels like life is happening to you at parts and you have to like take time to like uh, what am I going to do for me today? And how, to, how am I going to make sure that I am feeling joy and like, you know, just like taking a step back and uh, from the busy, busy schedule that college can offer. Yeah. We've got time for just one more question. Okay. The question was, how's the food? And let me tell you, I love this question. Um, in preparation for this job, I took it upon myself to eat at all the different places on campus and rank them. 
So I'll tell you my personal favorite. I think the best place to eat on campus is downstairs on the first floor of this building on the east end. Uh, we have the hub. It's just a food court. There's like a taco time and a subway. But the best place is called the Scotsman's Corner. They have like breakfast burritos and like pancakes and stuff like that. They also have a lunch special that like rotates. I love the chicken sandwich there. So if, if they have the chicken sandwich, I eat lunch there. That That's my best place to eat on campus is the Scotsman's Corner. Um, I'm a quantity over quality kind of guy. Um, I'm, I'm the kind of individual that goes to gets a Costco membership purely just to buy pizzas that I will finish in one sitting. Um, so for me, my favorite place is on campus or the all you can eat buffets. Um, we have two, so we have the junction that's going to be over near a lot of the residence halls. Um, it's definitely more like home cooked food. Um, and you can get as much as you want, which is most excellent. Um, but we also have the marketplace was just right here. And the nice thing about the marketplace, I usually tend to go there if I'm going to go anywhere, just because they have such a wide variety, you know, so it's like, it's not just all you can eat biscuits and gravy. It's all you can eat tacos and pizza and hamburgers and salad and ice cream and whatever else you want. Um, so if your student is definitely a quantity individual, I would, I would recommend them going to the marketplace. Thank you guys so much for all your questions. We've enjoyed um, doing this today and Sierra will take it from here. Okay, I hope you enjoy hearing from them as much as I do. This is truly my favorite part of the day and they have a lot of really good experiences and backgrounds to talk about with you. Um, and so we still actually have them for a few minutes. Um, what I'm giving them right now are called conversations for the ride home or maybe conversations that you should have with your students before you send them off to college. Um, and there are a lot of good conversation starters for maybe some of those harder conversations to have. Um, and so they're each getting a little stack and they're going to come around in the crowd and hand those to you. Um, while they're doing so, feel free to snag them and ask them any of the questions that you might have. Um, ask them personally, or if you want to get extra information from any of them that answered those questions, um, feel free to do that right now. We have a few minutes to do that. While they're doing so, the other thing that I just wanted to point out, they talked about social media, um, and that's how you get to know a lot of the events that are going around on campus. And so I would encourage your students and even you, if you'd like to stay connected to what they're doing, to follow a lot of these Instagram pages. That's where the majority of that information is going to be. Uh, this QR code will link you directly to our A-Team Instagram, where you'll probably see some fun photos of your students on there today. So make sure you follow that as well.